First of all, it's a great honor to introduce our next keynote. It's a truly an honor to introduce Nina Vaca to you today. She's one of the country's most celebrated entrepreneurs during her 20 years as chairman and CEO of Pinnacle Group. It has grown explosively, and she is consistently named among the fastest growing women-owned businesses in America. Nina serves on boards of three publicly traded Fortune 1000 companies, including Kohl's, which is a Fortune 150 company. She has been named Ernst & Young's Entrepreneur of the Year and an NBC Latino Innovator and a Goldman Sachs Most Intriguing Entrepreneur. For over a decade, she has also been named one of the 101 most influential Latinos in America. Although impressive, Nina's business success is only half of her story. She is also a committed civic leader dedicated to advancing STEM talent and building business and communities globally. She's the Entrepreneur Council Chair for the Million Women Mentors Initiative and invests in local STEM students, helping 125 high school students graduate annually, ready to launch their own successful STEM careers. As a presidential ambassador for global entrepreneurship, she has traveled across five continents to share her story and empower the next generation of entrepreneurs. She is also Chairman Emeritus of the United States Hispanic Chamber of Commerce and serves as chairman of its foundation, which houses at the table an initiative she founded to advance some women in business and leadership. Through her work as a leader and philanthropist, she embodies what it means to be a STEM leader. Please help me welcome Nina Vaca. Good afternoon. Before I begin, let me just take a moment and say that I had the pleasure not just to attend but to reflect on the leadership dinner we had last night. And I just have to take a moment and thank the GSTS Leadership Committee, of course, Dr. We lovingly call her Dr. Heidi, um, and, and of course, Edie Frazier for creating this incredible ecosystem to advance STEM and around the world. Could you help me thank them? I just had to do that. I, I reflected on it last night and I thought, this is just, what an amazing ecosystem we ha you have built here by bringing people together, then mobilizing and then executing. We create great impact and I'm proud to be part of it. In this summit, you have heard and you'll continue to hear from subject matter experts, thought leaders, scientists, technologists, extraordinary speakers. I am not one of them. I am, however, living proof of what is possible when you allow women and minorities to enter the STEM ecosystem, even at the fringes. Let me explain. I didn't start off with three honorary doctorates. I didn't start off serving on three publicly traded company boards. I didn't start off owning a software company. I certainly didn't start off as a White House appointed presidential ambassador of global entrepreneurship. I got there through STEM. I started off as an immigrant to this country. My mother and father came, thank you. My mother and father immigrated to the United States they had five children and they did immigrate with a suitcase and a dream. And around our living room and in our dining room table, it was ingrained in my soul that the American dream was through entrepreneurship. It was through entrepreneurship. By the way, all five children grew up to be entrepreneurs. It was ingrained in the topic of conversation among, among the incredible opportunity to live in a country where you can do just that. Now, a generation later, around my dining room table, I'm telling my children that STEM and a career in STEM is their vehicle to the American dream, even at the fringes, even at the fringes. So, a generation ago when I was 15, 15 years old, did I just age myself? I think I just did. A generation ago when I was 15 years old, I saw my first computer. As a result of my father trying to use technology to enable his entrepreneurial venture, and less than a decade later, 
I became an entrepreneur. And like a good entrepreneur, I just saw a need in the marketplace, and I filled it. <laughs> and to what can only be described is the most amazing adventure and the amazing journey of my life in the last 20 years. Pinnacle has gone from my living room floor to being the fastest growing, one of the fastest growing business in America for the last decade and culminating and crescendoing finally to cross over a billion dollars and become the fastest growing woman owned business in America. But more importantly, for the last 20 years, Pinnacle has had a front row seat to seeing the IT demands of some of the largest companies in the United States and arguably the world. We've been providing them with IT solutions and so we get to see firsthand what they're looking for, when they're looking for, and what is the demand. And I only have several minutes so I'd like to share two observations that we have seen from this phenomenon. Number one, our industry-leading companies, Fortune 500 companies, no longer want to be known as their industry. They're morphing themselves into technology companies. Our customers are no longer in the te telecommunications business. They're not in the media business. They're not in the healthcare business. They are in the business of technology. And what that does, and what that does, is it creates an increase in demand and talent. But the other thing that it does it changes the culture of the company in a meaningful and material way. And that is an incredible observation that we have seen and now that we have to address. And the second thing we've actually seen is something you already know. There's just not enough talent to meet the demands. And let me tell you how vast that demand is. Today in the information technology, there is a less than 2% unemployment rate, and that will continue to drop. Today, America is not graduating, you already know this stuff, we're not graduating enough STEM talent to meet the needs of our customers, particularly when we think about how companies are morphing themselves into technology. And if you don't believe me, I have a study for you. And the study was done by the OECD. And, and that is the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. And it's very clear that China and India are leading this vanguard. Because in 2013, they were leading the expansion. China had outstripped the United States in its share of global graduate talent pool with 17% of all young people with a degree compared to the United States 14%. Here's the scary part. In the next decade and a half, we're gonna see that gap grow. Because according to the OECD, the projections that are by 2030, a quarter, over a quarter, that means 27% of all 25 to 34 year olds with a degree will be from China. The other 23% will be from India. And the United States will language, languish at 8%. 8%. If that does not create a fire in your belly about one single important fact, and that is that STEM education is no longer a nice to have, it's not popular thing to do, and it's certainly not the right thing to do. STEM education is an economic imperative in this country. STEM education is an economic imperative in this country, without a doubt. And so Heidi asked me, to talk a little bit about what we're doing for this demand and this challenge. And before I do that, I want to say that no matter how small you are, you can have great impact. And before I talk about what we do, I want to give you my perspective on the customer base. What are the answers? Because I threw out a problem, and I shouldn't throw out a problem without at least an answer. And by the way, in the, world, in the words of Oscar Wilde, the truth is rarely pure and hardly simple. So the answer is very complicated. And many of you who know me personally know I, I, I certainly do not have all the answers, but I do have a perspective. And my perspective is that we can do three things 
Not only are our customers doing it, but we're doing it. Number one, we have to reskill our current employee base to meet the ever-changing and morphing needs of technology. Reskill. Number two, you got it. Education is and will continue to be the constant equalizer in this country. How do we fill the pipeline with that STEM talent? And number three, and perhaps the most important to me, is work locally. One of the things I've learned as a global leader is that before you do global things, before you do national things, you always start locally. So let me tell you what Pinnacle has done locally to answer the call. Pinnacle partnered with industry, by the way, the only entrepreneurial venture in Dallas, Texas, worked with policymakers, worked with a community college district, and worked with a set of 12 high schools. These 12 high schools are located in underserved areas, and you guessed it, they're 99% minority mostly African-American, mostly Hispanic. And here's what we did. We started a collegiate academy. It just kicked off this year. And here's the punchline. We are collectively going to be graduating hundreds of kids in Dallas, Texas from this year and beyond with both a high school degree and an associate's degree at the same time with a STEM track. I'm jazzed about the opportunity. It's been a long time coming. It's been years in the making. But this is how we're affecting change locally in our community. And remember, these kids come from underserved communities. They are first-time college hopefuls. But by infusing our own community with STEM talent and giving them that opportunity, we'll start to change. Remember, no matter how small you are, you can make great impact. Pinnacle is probably even at a billion dollars, the smallest company in this room and the smallest company in the summit. But you know what? Even, it, even small things can make great impact. And by starting locally, we remember a saying I always live by, and that is when you start locally, oftentimes you help a family. And when you help a family, you help a community. And when you help a community, you start to shape a nation. And when you start to shape a nation, then you can change the world. Thank you, Edie. Thank you, Heidi. Thank you to STEM Connector for allowing us to be part of this STEM Connector family and change the world. Thank you. Thank you.